Through the 1940s, Muhammad Ali Jinnah suffered from tuberculosis. Only his sister and a few others were aware of his condition. And on the 11th of September 1948, the father of the nation fell victim to a combination of tuberculosis and lung cancer. In the past, TB was known as consumption, as it seemed to eat people up from inside. In Pakistan, unfortunately, it's a disease of poverty, affecting mostly young adults in their most productive years. Baku is 25 year old and he sells chicks in Empress Market. Uh, about 12 or 13 days back, while he was lifting some heavy object, he suddenly felt pain in his right side of the chest. And, uh, and also with that, he was having breathlessness. He came to the emergency department of JPMC where he was told that he has ruptured his lung and the air has accumulated in the chest. So a chest tube has been placed so that the air can be drained out. This is basically one of the complication of TB, that the lung get ruptured. So this is what has happened. TB is very high in Pakistan. It's actually high all over the world. One third of the world's population uh, is infected with the bacterium that causes TB. Alongside that, new infections happen at a rate of one every second. As far as the communicable diseases are concerned, TB has, is top on the list. We are the sixth highest burden bearing country of tuberculosis worldwide. And about two million people in Pakistan are suffering from active disease. That is, these are those people who are spreading the infection. TB was a massive scourge even as far back as in the ancient world. In the 17th century, it swept through Europe, earning the label of the Great White Plague. And to date, it continues to be a grave threat, so much so that in 1993, the WHO declared TB a global emergency. There are estimates that the average patients with active tuberculosis will infect anywhere between five to 10 other patients in a given year. So if you're left untreated for, say, 10 years, you may infect as many as 50 to 100 other individuals during that time period. So that's why it's really important to cure them so that they stop transmitting the disease to other people. Unfortunately, the disease carries a serious social stigma because of its link with poverty and overcrowded living conditions. And either because of a sense of shame or a lack of awareness, three quarters of sufferers in Pakistan are never actually diagnosed by a doctor. Particularly what we see is that the females don't like to report. They are being restricted to stay at home. Because uh, they're at the age when in a couple of years they want to get married and their mothers really don't want uh, people in the neighborhood or relatives to know that their daughter has TB. They feel like, oh, this is in the family, One of the great frustrations of modern TB control is our failure to have a vaccine. The BCG vaccine, which is given for TB, only provides partial protection against the disease. There's a debate around the BCG vaccine in terms of how effective it really is in preventing specific times of tuberculosis. BCG vaccine do protect you from getting severe form of TB, but majority of the patients, despite having BCG vaccination, do develop TB in the adulthood. TB is a leading killer amongst people with HIV, and part of the reason for the spread of TB is that TB control programs, if poorly funded and organized, often do more harm than good. The treatment for TB involves at least a six-month antibiotic drug regimen, and the government's national TB program has been attempting to manage the outbreak. National TB program was existent for a long time, but once this, there was a resurgence of TB in the West, so they started because there was a lot of migration from the third world countries like Pakistan, and the TB was going to their country also, so they had really put their foot down that you have to control TB in your countries. So what we are seeing is that in the last five or six years, there has been a lot of efforts in controlling TB in Pakistan. But I tell you, if the effort has been started now, the result will start appearing in 20 to 25 years' time. Susceptible TB is relatively easy to treat, but often what happens is that poor treatment on behalf of a physician who might not prescribe the right medicines to the patients, or poor compliance on behalf of the patient, 
really does lead to the development of drug resistance. If a patient decides to take one drug and not take the other because he doesn't like the taste of it or it's too many tablets to take or they have money to buy only one and not the second one or the third one, then that is a disaster. So when you're treating a patient with TB, it is perhaps better not to treat the patient at all and let his own immunity overcome this infection or let this patient perish with this infection. Because if you treat him incompletely, then you are harboring the production of multidrug resistant TB bacilli, which will spread multidrug resistant TB in the community. So a patient with drug resistant TB infects other patients with the same drug resistant TB bacteria. And that's really why MDR TB must be controlled. About 9,000 people are suffering from multi-drug resistant TB in Pakistan. For the viewers, it may not be a big number, but you see the treatment of these patients are extremely difficult. They have already got resistant to the usual drugs of TB. Secondly, the treatment is quite prolonged. If the number goes on increasing, they will be spreading the infection and we will be seeing multi-drug resistance from the right from the very beginning, which will be an extremely dangerous situation. We have not reached to that limit yet, but we are heading towards that. After the break, we look at ways to control this menace.